Good evening. Welcome to day something of the something something. I don't want to name this. Um, the, it, living in the days of the virus. Hey, Mark Kaplan and oh, two Marks. Two people tune in and they're both named Mark. Um, from different, an old neighbor of mine and a new neighbor of mine. Um, looks like the color just changed. Do I look strange? I mean, don't answer that. Stranger than normal? No, I look pretty normal. Um, bad day to start trying mushrooms. Jim, Jim, say something, Jim. I've seen you pop up before, like you want to lurk. But I've, but you're outed. Facebook outed you. You've been outed, Jim Browning. Rebel Stoke, Jim, and John Cumbers. Thanks for tuning in. Um, wherever you are, where are you, John? Um, and what time is it in your time zone? Um, so yeah, I thought I'd, uh, you know, especially on Facebook, uh, if you don't have a scheduled webcast that everyone would show up precisely on time for, no doubt, um, then uh, nobody even knows you're live until you're live and and then people trickle in, and there you are. Mark and Mark and Jim and John have all trickled in. And um, I thought we could talk about a few things. I thought we might talk about toilet paper a little, since it seems to be on everyone's mind. And I have, and because the last video I made was so sincere, we gotta do a 180. Um, I had a thing happen that's, that happened when I used, I used to make science videos for time.com, Time Magazine's website. And if it said, you know, science comedian Brian Mallow, and some of the videos were kind of funny, but some of them really weren't. They were just cool science videos. Um, and so they would inevitably get some wisecrack comment. So uh, my video about taking precautions, but not panicking. I'll play it in a little while if you haven't seen it. Um, it's not funny. It's not intended to be funny, even. And the first comment on YouTube was like, something like, um, uh, I missed the comedian part. Um, Cause I did put as a title that I'm science comedian, Brian Mallow, but isn't it, hey, Carol Ann, hey, Conchita, Denise, Ricky. Um, Hello, Ms. Kennedy, and Bill, Bill Pack, um, one of Chicago's finest magicians and skeptics and lecturer on topics ranging from Houdini to other topics of his that I don't recall. Hey, Jonathan, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, so I thought we would talk about a couple virus things and just a couple random things and toilet paper because I was just saying that my first video was so sincere and so we got to do 180. Um, hey, David, how are you doing? David, it's time to reinvent ourselves. Those of us who make a living almost exclusively by appearing in front of groups of humans uh, suddenly find their income approaching zero. It's, it was a really sharp curve. One day I had gigs on the books, the next day I had fewer and then there were none. Um, story of my life, really, but this time, uh, we, we have a, a microscopic villain, um, who's reared his head. Um, oh, Bill, you, you bought a website for that? Um, libraryprogramming.com. Bill is a magician and, like I said, speaker, um, uh, and enjoys history, especially where it sort of intersects with magic and people like Houdini. Um, and he does a lot of talks uh, at libraries, typically, most seasons, uh, uh, especially around Illinois. And uh, hey, Elena, thanks for tuning in. Yep, doing it as we speak, David. Um, doing what as we speak? Are you trying to get gigs or you're losing gigs or reinventing yourself? Um, hey, Ben, welcome. Welcome to Stand Up Comedy Reinvented for a New Age in which humans don't meet in person. We all saw this, fans of science fiction, we've all known this was coming. 
We didn't know this was going to be the reason. You know what's funny? Um, uh, not a haha -ha funny, so don't get your expectations up too high. Um, I used to think about, you know, how many jobs are being displaced by cultural changes and technology. For instance, self-driving cars are poised to uh, displace a lot of people. So a lot of people are in job typewriter repair men, um, you know, uh, people that specialize in uh, rebinding your papyrus books. Um, you know, some people have been placed out by changing technology. And I thought as a stand-up comic and science communicator and speaker, I thought, you know, um, I just remember always thinking it's like, yeah, you know, because of the creativity and all that, that there's, that, that my gig was safe. But isn't that funny how things that we don't see coming, like um, worldwide quarantine and no more appearing in groups. Humans, like other primates, quite naturally appear in groups of various sizes, often too big for any, it's, it's not really in anyone's best interest, sometimes. But, uh, but uh, yeah, didn't see that coming. So um, there will be no speaking in front of groups of people for a while, and except like this. So we're experimenting. Everything's a big experiment. Hey, Karen Cooper. Yep, David Orban, you're always reinventing. Lynn Fellman and Romeo and Bruce, thanks for tuning in. And... Um, yeah, so, you know, I, one thing I could, I didn't prepare much. I, 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 I brought my little video that probably you all have already seen. I posted a video that's non-humorous by design um, about how we're just taking precautions. We shouldn't panic. What we're doing are just safety measures. And um, probably most of you already saw this, but um, Brian May, the guitarist of Queen, who got his astrophysics PhD about 12 years ago or so, completed, he was working on it before Queen, um, then Queen got in the way, and he went back and he completed his PhD at the age of like 59, about 12, 13 years ago. And he's also an animal rights activist, as well as um, a stereo photography evangelist and publisher who brought, resurrected the London Stereoscopic Company that existed in the 1850s. And for about 10 years, he's been putting out content. And in fact, um, I, I guess this, if I read this right, today is like worldwide 3D stereo, stereoscopy day. And uh, someone I know posted, I can't believe this was also on this same date that uh, we both got our start. She was living in LA, I was living in San Francisco. Someone I know now that's part of the stereo photography scene. Um, Brian May gave a talk when his first book came out about stereo photography uh, at Griffith Observatory. And I got to go down there and interview him. I'll show you clips someday, someday soon. And, uh, and enjoy this really cool talk. And now someone I'm friends with, it turns out that we were both at that event. And it may have been 2010 or nine and possibly on this date, but I'm a little confused about that. Um, Andrea and Ashley, Tom Hester. Thanks, Tom. He likes the background. And Steven Slater, good to see you, Brian. I hope you're good. Steven Slater, uh, film archivist who's worked on many projects um, um, quite noticeably, recent, notably and recently, uh, the Apollo 11 documentary. And I met him at Starmus in Zurich last uh, summer. So yeah, good to, s good to see your name, Steve. I'm glad you can see me. So this is what passes for stand-up comedy now, but less funny. Um, anyway, this was all to say, Brian May, interesting character, um, and because of our shared interest in stereo photography that he inspired, um, he came to follow me on Instagram about a year and a half ago and he sometimes likes my posts and uh, sometimes makes a little comment. Well, I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised last night when he actually uh, shared my video on his Instagram page. 
He did some kind of screen recording of it and the audio and the video ended up completely out of sync. And, uh, but, uh, it's the thought that counts, right? It's like a two minute video and he wrote like over the top nice things about it. And he said, uh, like that it was, that it's not funny, but it might save your life. And from his friend, the science comedian, Brian Mount. So, uh, and, um, and when I thanked him, he said something else nice. So last night was a quick thrill. I've liked that band, liked <clears throat> is really not the right word, since junior high school, since the mid to late seventies. Um, they were always my favorite band and he's, uh, hey, Greg Rice and Michael Krieger. So, uh, um, so it's pretty surreal anytime I see that he's looked at my posts or liked them or made a comment, but that he shared this and it wasn't even comedy, um, and said these nice things about it. It was pretty thrilling. So last night was a really good night. So there are these little things in the midst of all the horror and on the edge of the apocalypse, um, it's kind of funny. My video is all about not panicking and here I'm kind of fear mongering, but who knows? I got to play both sides and, you know, bet a little on one side, bet a little on the other. One of them's bound to be right. Cheers. I'm only drinking water. I wonder, that's something that I did not stock up on yet. I've got some groceries. I live alone. I don't need that much. I probably have enough toilet paper. I don't know why that is such a thing. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, maybe maybe any second now. Um, does it, do any of you watch Westworld? Uh, I don't really wanna to get to that topic yet. I guess I'm stalling. But uh, have you been watching Westworld? Last night, the first episode of season three was on and I watched it. I found that I, I had to go back and watch the last episode of season two. And that turned out to be like a two hour episode, but that was good. It got me back in the zone. So Westworld season three, episode one, last night, I watched it and I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. Just what uh, I, I've been enjoying the series the whole time. And then when it was over, there was this really weird thing. It's on HBO, by the way. And this very weird thing happened. When it was over, I didn't even have the option to watch another episode. Yeah, yeah, like, have, have you even heard of such a thing? It was so weird. Like, what year is this? What's going on? I'm disoriented and confused. I watched one episode and they're saying that I'm gonna have to wait like a week to watch another one. This is not how I consume media anymore. Um, even though I'm the age that I am and have, uh, and go back to a simpler time when the television set only had three networks. Um, and then these other ones, the UHF ones. There's VHF and UHF. And um, and I remember the time when the TV networks would sign off at the end of the night and they'd play the national anthem. And then, they, then they'd go to Fuzz, which I've since learned, and, and, and maybe you've heard this, and if you haven't, that when you're looking at that, uh, that picture when they stop broadcasting and it's just noise, that, that a certain percentage of that noise is from the cosmic microwave background radiation, the faint remnant of the Big Bang, and the earliest signal that I guess we've been able to detect so far. Um, Bill's waiting for a drunk Brian live feed. Thanks, Denise. Um, it could happen. Let's see how this all goes. I'm not a big drinker though. I'm not a huge drinker. I'm not opposed to it. Um, Andrew, thanks for tuning in. Ashley says, every Westworld fan is hoping to get stock till the last episode. Just, just joking. JD Mack, thanks for tuning in. Um, but you can get sucked into the TV, Poltergeist, yeah. Um, but not anymore, now it's all digital and there's no noise like that and it all goes away. But, um, 
just back to this important thing of where, what the hell? It's just so weird. Um, I may have to just not watch it for a few weeks so that they've taken the binge out of binge watching. I, I can't, what is this? You have to wait a whole week to watch the next episode? Who's ever heard of such a thing? I sure haven't. I can vaguely remember the past. So, um, yeah, um, I'm going back to watching shows that I'm behind on. That way you can, s you determine self-determination. I want to determine how many episodes I will watch tonight. I don't want to leave that in the hands of home box office. HBO, if that is your real name. You know? All right. Any questions? I had heard that and always wondered if it was true about the post-programming static. It is true. It's a small percentage. It might be 3% or a fraction of that. Um, it's, it's, um, but yeah, it's just because the cosmic microwave background radiation uh, emanates from every part of the sky. And I guess the frequency where it is, is uh, within what's detectable by those TV sets, television sets. They used to be television sets, then they just became television. I wrote a line many years ago that I never used it much. It was just that, um, here's what it was. And it was based on another line of mine with a similar structure. Um, I don't like TV because I know what it stands for. Whatever. <laughs> um, I like uh, wordplay and and punny stuff. So, um, also, who are these people who only watch movies one time ever in their life and then they're done with that movie? Is that something you can relate to? I guess TV shows too. Um, I said this to my sister and she said she is that person and that probably 90% of the movies she's ever seen in her life, she's only seen once. And she said, because there's so many movies, so many, like, why watch that again? Um, but the ones I like. I mean, and then I asked her, well, what about songs? Do you ever listen to songs for a second time? And she said, of course, and she tried to say that it was different. If you're watching, Ellen, you don't get to represent yourself unless you're in the comments section. I get to represent this conversation exactly the way I choose. <laughs> she may never know anyway. But she seemed to think that was completely different. And granted, a song might only be three minutes long, or in the case of Bohemian Rhapsody, five minutes and 55 seconds. Um, and a movie could be two hours. But, um, but maybe it's only 90 minutes or so if it's an old short comedy. Um, I like, I've, you know, uh, words aren't coming. Hey, did you know, look at that. Words weren't coming out. Um, yeah, I can see, when, when I like music, oh, I listen to it repeatedly and deeply. And for years, um, there's music that I've been listening to for all my life, pretty much. Um, and that I still love. It still sounds fresh to me. And there's other music that doesn't. There's, there's some stuff that is becomes dated really quickly and becomes of a time in your life. Um, but but the best stuff has, has hung on. The stuff that resonated the most, I guess, got hooks in me really early. Um, and of course, Old Queen and Old Elton John, that stuff, and other classic rock. But, you know, there's certain individual songs. And there's one I stumbled across the other day that I think because I first heard it in elementary school, it's that song, I forget who sings it. It's called Chevy Van. Um, not on, it took you by the hand. We made love in my Chevy Van and that's all right with me. Um, see, I can't remember it very well, but the tune, it goes deep. Same with Black Water by the Doobie Brothers. For some reason, that song, uh, because I think it got its hooks in me in elementary school, right? Um, hi, Sky. Um, you're with my sister. I'll rewatch it if I really enjoy the movie. I'm not opposed 
to rewatching a movie. Well, and she has rewatched some. I don't rewatch the bad ones. What are we talking about? Of course I don't rewatch. That's not a hundred percent true. <laughs> Haven't you ever rewatched something that you really didn't like that much? And you're like, of all the things I could rewatch, why am I watching this? Or it's just bad. And you're like, I've gotten better at that where it's like, you know what? I can bail from this because there is so much. There are so many classics I haven't seen. There's so much I still need to see. Um, you reach a certain point where you realize, you know, realistically, I'm not going to see all the great films that I want to see. And I am not going to read all the great books that I would love to read. Uh, just simple math. At a certain point in your life, you're like, oh, yeah, I needed to have started... Uh, and you know, I did just touch my face, but you know what? I, I have this vision of people in their homes washing their hands a lot, even though they're not going out, like missing the point or something, like trying to kill a virus when, when you've had no contact. Like, I haven't touched another human in a little while. Um, the closest I've, oh, I got a story for you. Um, this is the closest I've come probably. Um, I live alone in this whole space behind me. And um, I have really cool neighbors that I'm friendly with, and most of them have dogs. And very often, I will hear them outside, I'll hear some voices, or I'll hear dogs and activity, and I'll step out and I'll get a little socializing um, that way. Well, so, um, two days ago, two, three days ago, um, I just know it wasn't Sunday. I was around near the front of the house and just outside, out there, I heard someone cough a couple times. Cough, yeah, I heard a cough. So I assumed it was one of my neighbors and I, I thought it would be funny to run out there and like point some accusing finger and you know, you know, illegal or uh, you know, I don't know what I was going to say. I was just going to riff something about, like, uh, you know, quarantining them or something. But the thing is, I went over to the door, and I pushed the curtain aside, and I looked out, expecting to see one of my neighbors that I could joke with. And it wasn't my neighbor coughing. It was the mail carrier sitting in their truck right in front of my house, coughing on my mail. And suddenly, I didn't feel like it was nearly as funny. I mean, it was kind of funny, but in a dark way. It's funny in a way, it's like, oh my God. And then the next thing I knew, they were putting mail in my mailbox. How many days do I have to leave it there before I can check it? Because my infected mail carrier just put, coughed and delivered my mail. Hmm. See, these are the new thoughts. This is the new reality. Uh, Denise says music is a whole other thing. Linda, I love these live streams. Great. Th these, this, these in particular are just live streams in general or mine. You shall have no other live streamer before you. Um, Chevy Van by Sammy Johns. Lanny Sacknewitz and Jeremy. Jeremy! Are you, are you doing your daily music questions? I was talking music for a second there. Um, maybe I had something else to say about music. You know... One thing is, um, you know, we're supposed to wash our hands for some 20, 25 seconds, whatever. And um, so you've seen some of the memes going around telling you like, whatever, happy birthday, singing it twice through is about 20 seconds. Well, there's a classic Beatles song. It's the final hidden track on Abbey Road. It's called Her Majesty. And it's 23 seconds long and it's really happy. And the thing is, so I actually did it. I'm washing my hands and I'm singing it and it put me in a good mood because it's a really fun song. Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl, but she doesn't have a lot to say. Boom, 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 boom. Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl, but she changes from day to day. I want to tell her that I love her a lot, but I got to get a belly full of wine. Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl. Someday I'm going to make her mine. Oh, yeah. Someday I'm going to make her mine. Bar. So, like, how can you not even be in a good mood as you scrub the viral particles off your hands and save your own life? The end. The end. Another song on that same album. So, uh, Gail Gerb Gail, how weird. Um, I was just reminiscing about songs 
that 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 really have their hooks in me because I was exposed to them in in elementary school. And the one that I mentioned, I sort of have an association with you. So um, I don't know if you're still out there, but um, hey, Chuck Pell and hey, Mark. But uh, Gail is someone that I knew back in elementary school and junior high. And somehow the memory is really vague, but you're kind of associated with my memory of one of those songs. I think Chevy Van. Uh, not that we made love in elementary, made love in my, that's, I wasn't doing any of that in elementary school. Um, but uh, just some reason, there's some connection there. Maybe it's just the time period. That and uh, Blackwater by the Doobie Brothers. So, so hi, Gail. And maybe that was a weird thing to say. Um, Chuck Pell, we should talk sometime. I mean, I guess we can't get together. Um, although by now you've surely invented something, Chuck. You've got so many patents. When are you gonna fix this? This is the problem you should be working on. Um, oh, hey, Gail, yeah. So, yeah, how funny, and Gail, Lanny, Gail, y'all are cousins? I didn't remember that. I probably knew that back then, huh? But uh, uh, not now. Yeah, so I was just thinking about some songs that, you know, those similarly, like, movie images. You know, there are two movie images that are seared into my brain from that young and uh some of the some scenes from the uh, the incredible shrinking man it was stark and black and white and i was i was little <laughs> and that movie was a powerful and weird scary movie to a little kid and there's some incredible images when he's fighting the um spider when he's smaller than a spider and he's using a a, a safety clip pin and um, and that and it's funny because the two movies I'm going to mention one is the Incredible Shrinking Man and the other is the Amazing Colossal Man, and uh, it's the opposite movie. And in fact, here let me uh, let me let me tell you an old bit. I never really did this on stage too many times because it's so weird. But <clears throat> here's an old one. Here's an old Mallow bit from the archives, circa last century. This is from last century, <clears throat> if I can remember. Um, I have a, I'm working on a script. I'm working on a script, that's what it is. I'm working on a script uh, for a science fiction B movie. It's called The Incredible Shrinking Man Meets The Amazing Colossal Man. And it's sort of a buddy picture. And what happens is on the day they meet, they're both regular size. And, but then like they pass through some kind of weird sparkly radioactive cloud or something while they're eating lunch. And then one of them starts uh, growing amazingly and the other starts shrinking incredibly and it threatens their ability to stay friends, you see? And then there's a scene where um, the amazing colossal man goes home and, and his mom is like, hey, <clears throat> whatever happened to your little friend? And he says, oh, we grew apart. All right. You know what? I need a button to press with like a, an applause or a laugh track or something. Jack Brandt! Every, it's like, wow, this is how bad the apocalypse already is. It's like everyone tuning in is from my deep, dark past. We got Lanny Sacknowitz. We got Gail Gerber. We got Jack Brandt. We got Mark Kaplan. We got a minion. <laughs> Who else do we have? And then we have people that I've met more recently. Um, and Bill and Greg. Yeah, oh, Mike Krieger. A minute ago, we had Mike Krieger. I don't know if he left or not, but we have Mike Krieger as well. So look at that. And that's, 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 that's incredible. Um, so, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, Bill, the fly, the original fly with um, Vincent Price. When the human-headed fly was caught in the web, screaming for help, help me, help me, as the spider comes near, that creeped the, oh yeah. And then, um, is it Vincent Price, or maybe it's a different male lead, who, who, instead of helping him, he freaks out and he kills him and the spider. It's like he was in the perfect position to save him. He was much bigger than that spider. And what does he do instead? He just freaks out and kills them both. And it's like, oh, that was just too weird. Um, sad, sad. And 
as different as it is, wow, the David Cronenberg remake with Jeff Goldblum, uh, which is so different. That movie, I love that movie so much. It's so Cronenberg. It's got some amazing lines in it. Um, yeah, hey, Mike Krieger. So yeah, Jack Brandt, worse. I tuned in right in the middle of that story and I have no idea what you're talking about. Can you jump right to Brian May, please? All right, Jack. So, you know, what, the live streams, I do sort of treat this like it's radio and if, if and, and it has to be repetitive a little because I'm excited about something. I already talked about Brian May, but Jack, for you, um, I'll tell you, and I guess a bunch of you weren't watching. Um, so I don't know if you know this, but so he resurrected the London Stereoscopic Company um, and he's been publishing books, some of scholarship for the past 10 years, about 10 books. One is Queen in 3D, but the others are mostly historical um, that have to do with collections of stereo cards from the 1800s or early 1900s. They're very interesting and some he co-wrote with like a photo historian and very interesting. Um, and the London Stereoscopic Company that existed in the 1850s and he resurrected, it's his company now. They sometimes have contests. So about a year and a half ago, I went and saw Queen in London and I have a stereo camera now. Ah, it's too far away. Um, it's in the other room, but uh, I've been in this hobby. So I, I finally, I got a 3D camera and I took some fantastic pictures. I was so thrilled uh, at the photos I got at this show. I had to get right up front to get good depth. And, and the colors, because of their lighting and costumes, it was just, and the lights were just amazing. So then they had a contest and this was really nice. The next day, someone else in the stereo community, another fan sent me a message to go, hey, Brian, I didn't know. Uh, the London Stereoscopic Company is having a contest. Send us your best stereo photos from the London Queen shows. And she didn't have to tell me, and she, I'm glad she did because I prepared a bunch of images and I won the contest. And when I did, Brian May followed me on Instagram. And so for this past almost year and a half now, he'll sometimes like my sh posts. And I see that he, even if he doesn't like them, Instagram stories, you can see who viewed. So I can often see that he viewed my stories. And even a, if there's a bunch in a row, he, he sticks it out and watches all of them. But sometimes he makes a little comment um, on a science post or a, a very often a stereo photo post. A lot of us post 3D photos to our Instagram. Okay, Jack, if you're still with me, that's the context that brings us to yesterday. So he follows me and, and I'm aware of that. And sometimes when I post something that I'm, proud of, I'm kind of hoping he'll see it. So yesterday, um, I shared this video. Um, and it's, it's not a funny video. It's about, it's about just saying that we don't have to freak out. We're not panicking because we're taking all these precautions. They're just safety measures so that we don't have to panic. Anyway, it's two minute video. I could play it in a minute, but I'll, I'll wait till after the story. Um, so I shared it to Instagram. And yesterday in the afternoon, he liked it. Awesome. And I was really hoping he would comment, but he didn't comment. Sadness, that was about four o'clock, I think. So uh, some point last night, like nine or 10 o'clock, uh, a friend of mine said, hey, Brian, one of the other stereo people said, hey, Brian May shared your video. And I was like, what? I didn't even know. And uh, he, he did some sort of screen recording of my Instagram post. His post is completely out of sync. Like the audio and video don't match up at all, but he shared my video and he wrote something really nice on it. Like he said, this is, he repeated, I said precautions, not panic. And I had it as a hashtag, precautions, not panic, precautions, that's all. And he wrote precautions, not panic. And he said that my friend, my friend, he said, my Brian May said, this was Brian May talking. Brian, tie your mother down, May. Brian, we will rock you. Brian, fat bottom girls, May, said, um, um, <laughs> uh, Brian, um, Brighton Rock, May, wrote, um, Brian Stone Cold Crazy, May, wrote uh, something like, my friend, the science comedian, Brian Mallow, uh, made this video, and he said something about how it's not funny, but it may save your life. <laughs> and then I said, thank you. And he said more and he said something like, it was, it's genius, Brian, or something like that. And thank you for letting me pirate it. 
which I didn't really let him, he did it without asking. I guess that's why it's pirating. But um, there, Jack, did you hear all that? Um, oh yeah, so like I said, um, he has commented on things before and it's always a huge thrill to me. Cause you know, maybe not everyone, half of the people watching know that Queen was by far my number one band all the way back to junior high. And we saw uh, a bunch of us, we saw them twice with Freddie Mercury. David Yaffe, my friend, saw them four times with uh, Freddie. Um, and you know, Brian May is my favorite guitarist, one of my favorite songwriters, and just one of my favorite humans. Um, astrophysicist, rock star, animal rights activist, stereo photographer, and uh, more. So yeah, you could say, this isn't even humble bragging, is it? <laughs> Where's the humble part? Uh, but yeah, it was pretty thrilling that he actually shared it and had nice things to say about it. So, and you know, so I met him um, at this Starmus event that I co-hosted and it was a five or six day thing and I host, co-hosted the opening ceremony. But as amazing as the week was, like I had thought I was gonna get more, I got to meet him and talk to him just a little bit. Um, but then I got to spend time with a lot of amazing people, including Steve Vai. Oh, Jack. Jack, are you still there? And Dom, I got something for you. Hey, all of you, so check this out. At the same thing, so like Starmus, Star and Music, this event that I was at last summer and I co-hosted the opening ceremony and Brian Eno and Peter Gabriel and Buzz Aldrin and some other Apollo astronauts were in the audience. I brought on Rick Wakeman. We talked and then he played. I brought on Chris Hadfield, the Canadian astronaut. So, and, I, and Steve Vai, and Steve Vai I did spend more time with and I, I interviewed him and I've shared a little bit about that, but check this out. This is not even 30 seconds, but here's an exclusive piece of video and here's how exclusive it is. Uh, this is Chris Hadfield, uh, who when he was on the International Space Station, he made a rock video, he made a video of his version of A Space Oddity by David Bowie, including some slightly different lyrics. And he played it at the opening ceremony. During the dress rehearsal, Steve Vai played with him, and then they made the creative decision that he wouldn't play it in the show. So the show was recorded, but this version, and I only got a snippet of it, but the bit I got is so cool. Um, so I was the only one shooting this. So this is Chris Hadfield and Steve Vai, and this moment, I like it better than the stereo vision. And they're being backed up by the Hans Zimmer Orchestra, and Rick Wakeman is on piano. But this is a very brief moment. Check this out. This is how cool Steve Vai is. Um, come on, was that cool or what? And hi, Jane, I saw that you tuned in. And Jane, I don't know how long you've been there, but I just spent the past 10 minutes talking about you know who, um, no surprise to you. But, um, and sorry for that stupid watermark, but uh, I'm not ready to put this out in its final form. And I wasn't able to make like a uh, translucent, um, I didn't do that in my editing software. I, I just did it just so in case somebody wants to rip it off. Hey, Ann, 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 I talked about you a little while ago. I told the little thing, Ann, are you saying that today's the anniversary of the date that we went to see Brian May, or it's just stereoscopy day and you're remembering your origin? Today isn't the anniversary of that date, is it? I didn't know, but I just told that story. And um, yeah, so that's pretty awesome. And hey, you wanna see a little more? I won't play much of this, but my first taste of Steve Vai at this dress rehearsal, um, he's playing one of his songs that's, I guess, a, a well-known song of his, an instrumental called For the Love of God. And 
I knew during the opening ceremony, I'm co-hosting. I can't, I wasn't gonna shoot anything during the show because I'd be backstage and on stage. But during the dress rehearsal, I went right up and shot some of this. I'm just gonna show you a minute of it so that I can come back and ramble. But check this out. This was me, I've always known who, like Steve Vai was a name to me. And this was like, oh wow, now I've been getting into it because he gave me like a half hour interview too and he was super cool. So, but check this out. Hello friends. You know, I always lock the doors. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Oh, did that just, really? Okay, here we go, for the love of God, right? Hello, friends. You know, I always- Okay, no, well, if that's there, what's here? Hello. Well, that's really weird. Hold on, I can fix this. One of the- Hello, friends. And did that- Hello, friends. You know, I always lock the doors to my car and my house. I never leave valuable stuff in my car. I won't place a glass of water too close to the edge of a table. But I don't do these things because I'm consumed with paranoia. I do them because if I take a few reasonable precautions, then I don't have to worry so much. So I've been washing my hands more. <laughs> All right. This is the behind the scenes version, so you get to see stuff like that. So now let's see if I put it in the right place. Is this Steve Vai? There's more of that, but um, uh, when, when I panned over to the piano player, that was Rick Wakeman from Yes. And you might even be able to tell, like, uh, they hadn't all had a chance to rehearse together. So that was Steve's song, and the orchestra had a score, and Rick Wakeman had a score too, but I guess he was figuring out what he was gonna be playing on it. So Jane, I, I don't understand. Hey, Richard Premont, how you doing? Um, and hey, Dom. Should have left his part in too loud for the gig. No, no, the actual reason was that Steve had a complete full song of his own for the love of God. And they decided instead of him having like a solo in a space oddity, they would just let Rick Wakeman shine on that song. So it was really more a creative decision. But oh, instead of that orchestra bit, when he does that with the guitar, I love it, it's so, it's so cool. But Jane, I didn't understand what you meant by you're making me really scared about going to digital instruction on Monday. See how easy it is? Why, why, are, you, why are you scared? Um, just mostly be yourself, but maybe crank up. You, you know what they always say about TV? Like, like you wanna crank up a little more than your normal self. So even though if it feels a little unnatural, it's that it's not that the camera adds 10 pounds, it's that the camera takes away a certain amount of enthusiasm or something like you have to bring a little extra, but don't go crazy. Don't be, <laughs> but you'll do fine. Hey, Caroline in Chicago. How are you, Caroline? I hope you're hunkered down and doing all right. 
At least when you quarantine, you got you got your uh, you got a whole little family there, and uh, I'm sure you're having fun with your little sparrow and your animal and and your husband too. <laughs> yeah, Lanny says he's a badass. Um, and sad, yeah, Jane, I gotta say, that Starmus thing was really something. I sure hope it happens again, and I sure hope I can be involved. Um, it was so cool. There were a dozen Nobel laureates. Turns out there were actually 13, because a few months later, one of the astrophysicists was awarded uh, this year's physics Nobel Prize was shared, I think, but his name is Michel Mayor and his team discovered the first exoplanet, the first planet around another star. Now we know we've discovered a couple thousand, but his team discovered the first one. Hey, Caroline, I still have to work. Oh yeah, you're, well, thanks. You're a healthcare worker. You know, you still have to work. The positive side of that is a lot of people like me, all my gigs are canceled and no one is offering to pay me. Um, and even if the government gives me $1,000, how long is that gonna last? Um, how long is all of this gonna last? You know, I was saying the other day, I, one of the things about this situation, it kind of reminds me of earthquakes on a different time scale. If you've ever experienced an earthquake, sometimes I've experienced one that was just like a sudden shift like that but most of the others were like a rumbling and one or two seconds in, you know, time sort of expands and you're one or two seconds in and you're thinking, is this about to end or is this the beginning of something really big? And then not too long after that, it's faded out. I have ne I never experienced a bad one. Um, in three years in LA and 17 in San Francisco, 20 years in California, I experienced many little tremors, but no major earthquakes. And um, and I always thought too, I traveled a lot, so 50-50 shot, I'll be out of town. But I didn't like the sound of that either. I don't want an earthquake to happen and all my stuff, while I'm in Iowa, all my stuff is the building is cracked in half and all my Queen CDs and... Uh, I can't think of any other possessions that I might have that would spill out and be free game for the public. Um, hey, Max, how's it going, man? What are you doing? Um, there's no comedy and there's no ballet. What are you doing? Um, Jeff Zweig is watching. Jeff, is that true? I've been talking about, would you believe, Queen and Brian May and... Um, I, pr I had said that I was gonna talk about toilet paper and I haven't gotten to that yet. Jane, oh, you went to Tenerife. You, so you went to Starmus and saw Stephen Hawking there. Um, Iowa has corn, that's very nice. I'd be sitting there gnawing on a corn on the cob, wondering what's going on with my possessions. Um, who's running away with my Queen 2 CD? They wouldn't even appreciate it. Uh, Jack, have to go. So glad you're doing well. Hope to see you soon. That would be great. Hey, Jack, thanks for tuning in. Take care. Um, so, yeah, so... Oh, before toilet paper, here's another shitty topic. Did you see this? So, today, I did not read the story, um, but I saw the headline that um, something about the administration wants to prevent asylum seekers coming across the border from Mexico. Um, I understand the fears and everything, but the thing is, first of all, um, I only saw them mention asylum seekers because of the fear of the virus. They might be carrying the virus, so we're gonna not let them in across the border. But, uh, what about the Canadian border? I don't remember, it, I don't think it, I don't know that it mentioned the Canadian border, um, just the Mexican border. That's a little weird, huh? Because the virus could come from either side. I don't, I don't think it's a Mexican virus specifically. I don't think Canada's immune. And I'm not, I'm not uh, saying that we should instigate this on the Canadian border. I'm going the other way with it. Um, I only have this to say about it. It's like, that's fine. You want to stop asylum seekers, but I just don't think that you can also call this a Christian nation. 
if you're gonna do that, that's really annoying to me. And I say that with all the authority of an agnostic Jew, a Jew like Jesus. Okay. Hey, David Levine. <laughs> um, how's it going, David? Uh, so, and Stephen Height, Jesus. Stephen Height, um, how weird. Almost everyone that's tuned in is from my childhood. A little while ago, Jack Brandt just left. Jack Brandt was in here just a second ago, just left it, to make room for you. And Lanny Sacknowitz and Mike Krieger and Gail Gerber and Mark Kaplan, and I think I'm forgetting a couple people, and Jeff Zweig now. Um, all these people from my childhood and Richard Premont from not as far back. Um, that's just crazy weird, but um, I guess we're all home and I popped up. Uh, Jack, yeah, Jesus would not prevent asylum seekers. I mean, that's, am I wrong? I'm a Jew, I don't really know, but Jesus was too, but come on, we know that. So it's like, okay, that's fine, but you can't do both, you can't have it both ways. Stop calling this a Christian nation and then acting like the anti-Jesus. Um, that's all I'm saying, and that's I, it's not my favorite subject to talk about. It's just so irritating, so frustrating. Okay, so, humans, are the only species that uses toilet paper. So does that mean we're the cleanest or the dirtiest? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know it's a shitty topic, but can you believe how much it's been on everyone's minds? I know we just need to wipe it. Maybe that's not the right word. Wipe the slate clean, <laughs> clear it off. Not since the invention of toilet paper has it been talked about so much. Am I wrong? Do you remember any time that we thought about toilet paper this much and it was part of the public discourse? It's insane. Not since it was invented, which I didn't bother to do any research on this, but I'm suddenly curious when it was invented and what does that even mean? I'm sure it was a gradual progression. Um, and I don't want to know what was going on right before the invention of toilet paper. I kind of like, I, I would like to know. Like, I always thought it was kind of funny. I think mirrors, mirrors are a fascinating invention and I used to jokingly think about like before we had these high quality very reflective mirrors like they were probably not as good and it's like the original the first mirrors were wooden <laughs> this was a silly thought I had once and uh so similarly <laughs> what do you think the first toilet paper was like and I mean and we know what um preceding all of it we can go we can just look around the animal world we know what it was like with nothing look at the other primates nothing but, um, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to know what it was like right before. Um, I'm on a roll. Thank you, Mark. Let, keep the puns coming. Um, yes, Max, as another Jew, does being quarantined make us poop more? Yeah, what is it? What is this? You know, here's my new slogan. Eat less, poop less. <laughs> that's, that's, that should be my new hashtag. Hey, everybody, if you're so terrified, eat less, poop less. It's science. Um, here's another old one from the archives. One time, I was going through the checkout at the grocery store, and I looked down, and I realized that all I was buying was food and toilet paper. And the whole cycle became so clear to me. If you buy that, you're gonna need that. It's endless. Every time, 100% of the time. You know, it's never not true. If you, you know, you eat that, you're gonna need that. Which is why, brainstorm, they should, that, they, that when you are at the checkout at the grocery, you should just get the amount of toilet paper that you're gonna need for the amount of food you bought. Right? Doesn't that make sense? It's better than the current system that sometimes leaves you stranded. And you know what? On all the stocking up and the hoarding of toilet paper, like, I get it. I get, I get, like, the fear of running out in general, it, in normal times in life. Um, I get it. There's, there are few things as miserable as, as being in there, sitting down, midway, you know, this program is already in progress and realizing that there's no toilet paper and you're like, hello, <laughs> yeah. anyone out there? Do you know where there's any more toilet paper? And then you get the answer back that, you know, oh, it's in, if, if, it's, if there's any, it's, that's the room it should be in. But anyway, um, 
here's the system that I think we should instigate. And it, first of all, it could put a stop to this hoarding, but this was an old idea of mine. And, and it's just that <clears throat> when you go through the checkout, the checker, of course, scans your food with a laser, calculates the volume, converts that into standard TP units, and then they pull it fresh off the roll for you. And you just waste not, want not, you take the amount of toilet paper you're gonna need, plus a little bonus, just a little, a little extra, of course, you know, some little percentage extra. But um, if you always get the amount of toilet paper appropriate to the amount of food, what's the problem with that? Problem solved. Am I right? Am I right? Um, and furthermore, I'm not done with this topic. Um, I'm snobby about the quality of my toilet paper. I don't know about you, but I hate it. When you go to a hotel, even a nice hotel, especially a not nice hotel, but or any public restroom that has really crappy toilet paper, really thin, um, useless toilet paper. I hate that. And I always use five times as much. I question the logic of it. Economically, I don't even think that they're making the right decision at all because I'm going to use five times as much of that to protect my hand and and to try, and it's still going to suck. It's still not going to feel good. Um, it's like, just give us the good stuff. We'll use an appropriate amount. We won't overuse it. It'll probably cost you the same and your customers will be much happier. Can I get an amen? Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> hey, Rusty. <laughs> Boy, you sure tuned in to the intellectual part of my program. Um, before Mar Jerry Jaffe, comedian Jerry Jaffe says, before modern TP, we use newspapers and or corn cob and or slaves. Uh, you know, there is a friend of mine was reminding me, you know, there's an old joke joke about a bear and I think a bunny rabbit. And the bear asks the bunny rabbit if it has any trouble with shit sticking to its fur. And the bunny says, no. So the bear grabs him and uses him. Because uh, there's no problem. You, have, you said you have no problem. Um, can you spare a square? Dominic, okay, I'm cooking dinner and this is not serving as an appetizer. I gotta go, love you, give me a shout. Sorry, Dom. Yeah, I don't know. Um, eat less, poop less. That's our final offer. That's, that's our new slogan. Um, but if we eat less, the virus wins. All right, so that's the scatological portion of the evening, except for what you do in your own homes. Um, Max says, amen, good to hear from you. Let's grab coffee when this passes. Sounds good. No, not the bunny. Exactly, Jerry, sorry. Um, yeah, Max, thanks for tuning in. Take care. Rusty, how are you doing? If you're still out there, if I didn't scare you away, but I said I was going to talk about toilet paper and... And you just, that just happens to be the part you tuned into. I'm sorry. I, I, I aim a little higher other times. We talked about this not being a Christian nation and we talked about Westworld and we're at about 59 minutes. So um, we'll probably just wrap it up and I'm, I'm glad I did this again. Um, I wish I could go live to Instagram while I do this but I'm sending this, by the way, uh, everyone I'm talking to is on Facebook, but you know what I could have checked? Was anyone watching from... Okay. Um, I'm streaming to Twitter and YouTube at the same time, but right now I'm not checking, I wasn't checking the potential comments from there, but I'm getting the most engagement on YouTube, but if you don't follow me on Inst on YouTube, would you? Because since personal appearances are out, I wanna build up my YouTube channel. I'm science comedian, it's youtube.com slash science comedian. YouTube.com slash science comedian. Uh, subscribe and click the little bell, get notifications. Um, and if you ever are inclined, uh, share the YouTube versions of any videos I make um, and I'm going to see what I can do to replace all my missing income. Uh, Madhu, thanks for tuning in. I was probably going to wrap up. Um, I, I'm, I'm right at about an hour now. How are you doing? How's you and your, how are you and your family there? 
Um, Jane, what app am I using for split screen? Well, it's not exactly split screen. What I'm using is, I'm using a piece of software that's like a video mixer called uh, OBS that's free and runs on a Mac and a PC. However, I'm gonna experiment with a new piece of software to replace this that's only for the Mac. But OBS is free, Mac or PC. And um, so what this is, is like I can set up scenes and I composited that scene and I can cut to it. Or I can cut to, um, Oh, sorry, when I, that scene, I actually don't think I had my microphone uh, up, up, but I could set up a clip. Like, let's say I wanted to run a clip of me talking to Alan Stern about Pluto. So tell me about it. So Pluto, there's so much right there to unpack. Tell me uh, what your hopes were for the mission. Like, what did you, uh, what would have been? But now, and as far as that split screen, that's something I did in Final Cut Pro. Like I made that clip in Final Cut Pro, and uh, and then some of these others, I just like my little Steve Vai clip. I just prepared them, and I'm and I'm actually using this little controller. This is a device from Stream Deck, and by setting these up, I made these buttons be if like press this button, and it goes to the chat, and I set it up like that. And when I press this other button, it'll stop the stream. Um, and there's a lot of other things, and I can uh, run my little video clip. So, Jody Liss, Jesus, Jody, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry to everyone else for the repetition. Jody, uh, you missed the largest, a complete minion of old Jews from Meyerland Lanny Sacknowitz, Gail Gerber, Jack Brandt, Stephen Height, Michael Krieger, <laughs> and now Jody Liss. Um, and I think I'm even forgetting someone. Um, quite a few people from the old country. Uh, Madhu, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, Mark, monetize that shit. So exactly, I don't know, I don't see monetizing this on Facebook. Although I do know Facebook has these programs that they've paid people, but you'd have to be a proven commodity and they offer some people a deal. But there's no monetizing these videos. Whereas on YouTube, YouTube's a complication. They changed their requirements for uh, monetization. So I have to achieve a certain number of watched hours within a 365 day period to qualify for monetization. And then you can start to monetize. So I'm not there yet. There's two requirements. One is a thousand subscribers and I have 2000 subscribers, but I don't know where they are but it's my own fault because I haven't been consistently producing content. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to consistently put out content and um, I'm somehow I'm gonna preferentially, yeah, uh, Jody missed, yeah, you missed the tribe. Jack had to leave a little while ago and oops, my things are getting tangled here, sorry. But, um, I'm gonna put out a variety of content, a lot of interviews with scientists and some rock stars and some other interesting people, any interesting people I can. Uh, I hope to have some interviews coming up soon related to the virus so we can learn a little something from an actual expert. I have some questions. Um, but you know, I love interviewing scientists, especially physicists, but biologists, anybody. Um, so more content will be coming, edited, and live stuff, some interview stuff, some of this kind of me BSing, uh, monology stuff. So, um, so Jane, yeah, um, OBS you can do a lot with, and you can set up titles. Like I could make this slicker, I just haven't yet. This is a work in progress. I'm experimenting, I'm trying to work out some tech. I'm actually having some problems with audio and video being out of sync. But the weird part is, it's it's not out of it's not out of sync now, is it? It goes out live and it's not out of sync. Later, when we watch it on demand, the Facebook versions especially have been out of sync. I don't know why, um, and especially on an iPhone. So very weird. Um, so I'm so I'm gradually ramping this up, and I kind of like this looseness anyway in the interacting. So tune in and talk to me, and you know what? Tell somebody else about me. Uh, get them to watch me on YouTube, preferentially, but Facebook, whatever.
Twitter. I'm also Science Comedian over there. Um, so thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more of this, uh, when I'm done here, if you wait a few minutes while Facebook cogitates, uh, then you'll be able to watch uh, any part of it. Um, so thanks so much. Good to see you. Um, hope everyone's being safe, washing their hands, not breathing at all, ever, <laughs> especially not around other humans. And uh, hang in there and let's do this again. This was fun for me anyway. I'll see you later.